The departmental government is carrying out the collection and removal of debris left by Hurricane Julia in order to have all the roads of the department ready in the shortest possible time. With crews in the most affected sectors, the departmental government, headed by the Secretariat of Public Services, carries out the removal of debris to enable the various public roads that were affected after the passage of Hurricane Julia. The head of the portfolio said that so far they have intervened educational facilities, the downtown area of the island, among other main roads of high vehicular traffic. As the community has evidenced, we are working on the fastest and most effective way to ensure the initial clearing of roads. We have removed fallen trees and today we are in the downtown sector. We invite the downtown community to be attentive to the collection that will take place in this area. We have already cleared educational facilities that have been affected by fallen trees and we continue in the downtown sector and later we will go to the residential sectors. On the other hand, the Secretary of Public Services, Asvel Bryan, calls on the community not to continue opening the sanitary sewer manholes which collapsed because they were filled with debris and waste. District 4 by nature is a vulnerable sector due to the physical characteristics of the soil. We have had some damage to the sanitary sewer pipe. This is due to the lifting of the manhole covers. That is why we call the attention of the people who do this, who seek to evacuate the rainwater because what this does is aggravate the situation. The Environmental Corporation began the implementation of restoration protocols studied by the National University to deal with emergencies. Here we tell you about it. As part of the interinstitutional response of hurricanes, the Environmental Corporation is working on the implementation of the restoration protocols provided by the National University. These protocols were the results of studies carried out after the passage of hurricanes Eta and Iota in the island region. La Corporación Ambiental. The Coralina Environmental Corporation, with which we have met, has already begun to make this rapid assessment at the level of the main terrestrial and marine ecosystems. This is also the result of a joint work that we have been doing with them to generate those protocols of what we should do before, during and after and to know how to implement the evaluation, restoration and monitoring work. In the same way, the rapid assessments of environmental impact observed after the natural phenomenon have already started. This will allow us to articulate actions with the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development through the National Environmental System. Identification of the number of families affected by Hurricane Julia continues to be conducted to determine how many families were affected by the hurricane and the numbers continue to increase as the days go by. After three days of the passage of Hurricane Julia, officials of the Risk Management Unit have already managed to identify 100 families in different sectors. 320 have been registered up to this point at the Departmental Government Information Collection Point. This was announced by the coordinator of the Office of Risk and Disaster Management, stating that they are trying to move forward with the information as quickly as possible. We're going, we're going really fast to characterize these different people. Um, right now, the Biden and the road, then the work have had. You got people from Secretary of Infrastructure, Secretary. You got people from um, Health. You got people from Gobierno. You got people from um, uh, Public Service. You got people from uh, Risk Management Office. And all these people that I wrote, they characterize and prioritize the people. Them. How will they work? Will they work with the um, Acción Comunal? If in your section got one action communal, you know, by the president of the action communal, I him when 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 take on information and pass it to we, but we can go direct to know how. If you know section count with um, a rival organization, you can go to the leader of this rival organization, so them can check down on our list, you know, then pass it to we, and we can carry it through. You know. The official emphasis is that they are trying to speed up the process to cover the damage to the homes of islanders in the shortest possible time and explains the strategy they will propose on this occasion. Uh, finish this process the fastest possible for we can help you know, giving out material. The process what we end up is giving up material so uh, we can help ourselves and, and rebuild back what we can rebuild back. 
uh, is uh, hard. We know everybody passing through a hard situation, but mm, the idea is that. Uh, Governor, so in the first floor we got uh, available one table with some person from the risk management office. The idea is if you're in your section, you know, got uh, at some communal normal rights organization leader, when you come to governor, we check the normal power list with some basic information, and uh, after that, we are send the engineer, the architect, and the different people that, that is, is on the road from make them see directly which is the damage on the house, and so we can help you know, directly with the material and what you need. It is important to remind the community that if they were affected by Hurricane Julia, they can approach the presidents of the community action boards or the community leaders who are in charge of receiving the information in order to process it as soon as possible. And the effects of Hurricane Julia on the archipelago continue to be felt by the most affected. We move to the neighborhood of La Paz where families are asking the government to give them a hand to repair their homes. After the anguish experienced by those affected by Hurricane Julia, they are now left with the problem of not having the resources to repair their homes or recover the vital belongings they lost. This is the case of two families from their past neighborhood who ask that their sector may be remembered and that they may receive some help. Julia tore off the wooden panels that were there and the ones that were up there also flew off. We are asking to see if they will give us some, even if they are second hand or something to fix the damage done by the hurricane. The roof of the bathroom was also taken and we put some racks on it. But it is a dangerous thing to do when you go there to bathe because if you are careless, it can fall and kill a person. That is the fear we have when we go there because the winds are still blowing and we shower in fear. The call to the government is that they at least come and look so that they can realize what is going on and give us a hand. We are not demanding it, but we are asking that they at least cooperate. John Davis is a rival with no city job who lives with two small children and survives on what little he can get. He was also affected by the passage of Hurricane Julia. His sister, Derbis Martinez, who was also affected as the government to help her brother who lost the little he had. My whole house shook. The alternate roof broke and we started to pray. And that's when we felt that my brother's house was blown away. Then all the neighbors came to help my brother. I was so scared, so scared that I didn't know which way to go. I had never seen this before, and I couldn't go out because my husband is an elderly person. I don't want them to help me, but instead that they help my brother, help him to build his new house, let them give to him and his little children what they need. It is expected that with the characterization that is being made of the damage on the island, the families of the La Paz neighborhood may be benefited with aid to recover a little from the damage caused by the Hurricane Julia. And a support campaign has been initiated in order to collect aid for the maintenance of the Casita del Mar, where members of the Association for Scout Guides met on the island. The headquarters of the guide squad in San Andreas suffered damages on the second floor after the tree that had been there for more than 25 years and that for them was a street relic on this building fell over it. Caroline G, a member of the association, stated to Tele Islas News that this is a big loss since the place was just finished remodeling two years ago. It is a very well-known site for many people. It is called La Casita del Mar. Unfortunately, during Hurricane Julia on Sunday, a tree of many years fell on the structure that had just been remodeled two years ago. A great effort of the association. This is the place where the scout guides work with boys and girls every Saturday, meet and develop the training activities that they have in their programs, which participate more than 30 boys and girls. Thank God the community has responded and helped us. Many people have called us. The Army, the Navy and private individuals have come to help us and today we are moving debris and trying to cover part of the roof so that the rest of the infrastructure does not end up breaking. 
After this situation, several collection campaigns have been launched in progress of the readapting and raising of these headquarters. Those interested in contributing to the case, please find information at the phone number 315-59-55961. A group of Raisal who lost their homes in 2002 took de facto action on a piece of land located in Fort Connor, a lot that according to them had been donated to them for the construction and relocation of the 14 families affected at that time, and that is now being used to be given to those affected by IOTA. For this part, Governor Everett Hawkins also referred to the specific event of the demonstration. Assign, they assigned this land to we, to 14 families from that time until now. We they in a meeting, trust meeting, trust meeting with all, with all the government, all the government people them. We they with planeation, we they with um, RESGO, we they with the governor self, we they with everybody we work with governor self. You see where they don't know then take this this land and assign to the supuestos damnificados them from the IOTA. IOTA just go yesterday, we have had 20 years of that and they not come up with nothing. We don't take over them house and we know they come back out at this Nokia what come. Only God can come. Only God can come and take we out out of this. The world where you are, the time use, the ethnic governor. Then a few the ethnic governor, all the governor pass after they done assign with this land and never try for TV. And you, where we can fit that you, governor, the ethnic you come and you take it and make it to a project your TV for we. Governor Hawkins showed a live Facebook message address the community of Fort Connor indicated that the houses were donated by a company and that they were given to families of Sultan since it's an area that is vulnerable to natural phenomena. For the four corner housing near Tom Hooker, which was managed by Eco Petrol and is totally donated, what we did was to donate the lot to build 16 houses for relocation since the IOTA phenomenon and the previous one for the relocation of the people from the south of the island, known as Punta Sur. We have been working on the construction of these houses for the Rizal families. We cannot deprive people by de facto means to have access to housing or is it that there are Rizals divided into categories? The term Rizal is supposed to bring us all together and they should be happy that families who are at risk have been given the housing possibility. Governor Hawkins indicated that he understands the precarious situation in which many Rizal families and residents live on the island and that the Fort Carner project is the focus for companies that want to contribute with more donations that could be located on land close to where the 16 houses were built, which is why he called on the protesters to reconsider blocking the construction soon. And through her research work on the role of woman in artisanal fishing, young islander Kate Bevan Santana was chosen by her university to be part of an academic meeting related to interlocuturality on ethnic approach. The young island girl, Keith Bevan Santana, an anthropology student at the Universidad de Rosario, was chosen to represent institution in a discussion on intercultural dialogues between Mexico and Colombia. This was done thanks to her research on the work of fisherwomen in the archipelago. Con este trabajo también espero dar a conocer que la... With this work, I hope to make known that on the island of San Andres, there are fisherwomen who are invisible and barely recognized by the government and the general population on the island. I also hope to show in my research work the impact and the maritime transformation that took place in 2012, that is the Hague ruling, but through a female point of view, from the knowledge and stories told by fisherwomen. Finally, once I finish my research, I hope to make a podcast to make known the problems that I have narrated and to make visible the fact that there are fisherwomen on the island who are hardly recognized. Van Santana specifies that through her research, she hopes to show that jobs have no gender as well as to make visible the role of women in artisanal fishing on the island, an activity that historically has been associated with men. Much attention if you are a producer of livestock, cattle, pigs and goats, this information is of interest to you. The departmental government will hold at 2 p.m. in the facilities of the Auditorium Walwin Peterson Ben of the Coral Palace, the socialization of a proposal of the animal production.
At this time, we continue with Victor Fusalba and the Sport News at Four Department. <laughs> Hello, here are the best sports of the island. San Andres is looking for a gold medal in baseball in the next national games. One of the flagship sports of the archipelago is baseball. San Andres has been a cradle of great ball players. Today, with the help of coach Jeronimo Blanco, San Andres will seek the gold medal in the sport of baseball in the next national games. We are looking to make a new goal here in San Andres, looking for the next gold medal in the national games. It is the goal that everyone has set from the government, the League of Coaches and Players. It is for next year, but it is for the National Tournament Qualifiers now in November, and I am helping the team of the Loma and the Baseball of San Andres with good practices, with good things for the pre-selection. Here there is good human material as if they were in the region of Cartagena, Barranquilla, Monteria, and Cincelejo. But we have to find a way for the boys to believe it. That is, to believe that there is talent and that is what is being done. That the boys know that he is a talented player and we, the coaches, the trainers, have to provide them with that support and that idea that they have. For all the young people of San Andres and Providence to continue dreaming, it is very good to dream. They have every good talent. The other thing is that they should be very disciplined inside and outside their home since that is very important and is being instilled in them. That is the message we are giving to the boys. With continuity, discipline and perseverance in the process, it is possible to return to the first line baseball and compete at a better level according to Blanco. And in another scenario, Island Football will be participating in the C-League Tournament of Professional Football. The Departmental Soccer League managed the possible participation of San Andres in the C Tournament of Colombian Professional Soccer. The preparation processes are already organized and according to the president of the league, will continue to work for the benefit of the island soccer. These were the words of the league president, Lyle Newball. Yes, I believe we're going to, to do that next year, but of course we need the support of the government. We need the economical um, support and I believe that would be a beautiful process, just like how we did uh, last year with, uh, with the Federative, with the Interclubes Sub-17, where we went for the first time, went there and participate and get to, to progress to the, to the next phase. One more process for the community and all island soccer lovers. We will continue to work for the benefit of soccer lovers, said Nuba. And this will be all in sports for the moment. I am Victor Fusalba, Tele Islas News. Thank you, Victor. With Sport News, we reach to the end of this broadcast. We see you tonight at 8 p.m. with more Tele Islas News. Good afternoon.